We've been slowly working our way through all the WRC unicorns. Previous episodes include Glenn's GT4 Celica, Shane's Evo 6.5 Tommy Mackinnon Edition, Cameron's 22B, and Mark's RS Cosworth. On this episode of Grassroots Garage, we have Kane's Mitsubishi Galant VR4. In the 80s, Mitsubishi hatched a plan to compete in the Group B class of World Rally Championship with a four-wheel drive version of its Starion Coupe. Group B is this amazing few years where rules were loose and car design was pushed to its limit. class was outlawed following several fatal accidents in 1985 and 86. So unfortunately because of this, Mitsubishi shelved the Starion project. But all was not lost, as Mitsubishi decided to put the Starion's drivetrain under their latest Galant and would compete in the Group A class. Mitsubishi Rally Art Europe campaigned the Galant from 88 to 92. We all know what happened in 92. Mitsubishi took the Galantz drivetrain and bolted it under a lighter and more compact Lancer platform. The Evolution 1 Lancer was born. You might have seen a Galant around before, but this is one of only 315 Australian delivered VR4s, which makes it very rare. Welcome to Grassroots Garage today. We've got Kane. Kane, thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Tell us about your car. Uh, so it's a 1991 Australian delivered uh, Mitsubishi Galant VR4. Uh, stroke 2.2, Garrett Turbo, all the juicy bits in there. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a good little car. I used to work in retail and one of the sales reps used to come in, in the cars, so you know, always talking about cars. He goes, oh, my cousin's got a, a car that he's thinking of selling. He's had it since 95, so 91, so 95. 
Uh, so all right, went and had a look at it. I rang him up and sort of negotiating price, and it didn't go through. And then four or five years later, I rang him again. So he still got that car. All right, I'll come and have a look at it. And then um, yeah, and got got it from him. So it was just it wasn't really for sale. It's never been advertised. And uh, so he bought it in '95, sold it to another guy. Um, however many years later, bought it back from him, and then I bought it from him. So it sort of had the original owner, Vince Emmanuel. Vince, then me. That's mad. So this is the original motor still, like it's not the original motor, but yeah. so like a Gen One four G six three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so would I know? Like if I put two four G six threes next to each other, would you know? Uh, so four to four to nine, the cam gears are on the other side. Okay. Right. So it's sort of right. the other way around. Oh. And did they flip anything else in the engine, or just that? Ah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Some, please comment, mate. Yeah, yeah. Someone, I do love these guys. They pop out of the woodwork. Precision built, two point two, so stroked. Um, Garrett, thirty five seventy six point eight three, rear housing. Bosch, eighty two mil, drive by wire, run through the Motec M one thirty, GPR computer. Um, two seventy two cams. Um, yeah. 402 kilowatts at the wheels. Yeah, <laughs> uh, is that a like? Is that an off-the-shelf? Um, um, God, what am I thinking of? Exhaust manifold? No. Nah, so that's Precision Racing at Riverston. They full fabricated. Yeah. Because it, it wouldn't be the same as an Evo. It'd have to be custom for the VR40 thing. Yeah, just trying to for the space because I'm still running air conditioning. Yeah. So yep. still factory radiator. Mm -hmm. um, so just yeah. Easy to do it there and go, all right, we know where we want to put the turbo mm -hmm. and then make it off. So three and a half inch dump to make it, you know, breathe. It is really, really quiet. And Aaron said the exhaust system is robbing a bit of power. Yeah. So it is really a quiet car. So cruising yeah. along, it's not really loud at all. Yeah. But so, yeah. A yeah. you know, little bit of power. You've got 400. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what, what I said to Aaron. I said, is that something we should look at? And he goes, no. No. He goes, it just adds to the whole car i think so too yeah. yeah uh so is this like the engine mount up here am i looking at an so there's an engine mount there there's yeah. a gearbox mount there. there's another engine mount there and there's another yeah. engine mount in the so back so is that like a billet is that's that... a bare yeah, billet um it's yeah so full poly mount so i do get a bit of vibration so there's a yeah. bit of yeah. you want 400 kilowatts you're, gonna, you're have to, gonna have to sacrifice yeah. something. So is that is that one of these things like the originals? They had a bit of a thing with the engine mounts, or that's just because you they break. So much? Yeah, the okay. rear ones, the, yeah, they just destroy <laughs> themselves. Because you're talking anything. the motor up so hard, oh, aren't you? I mean, yeah. Like, it wants to, whichever way it spins, it wants to like, you know. What yeah. I mean? They want to flip. So that they're just it would I you know, probably three engine mounts, the rear engine mounts, and now I've just gone off stuff this. I'm just putting poly in it, yeah. stop it moving anywhere. So these cam gears are they like oversized? Nah, so they're just adjustable. So yeah, we can okay. fiddle that, with so it's a factory size. Yeah. That's, they, they seem, like, that's my, like, one of the things that I'm just obsessed with is, like, you know, old cars, what seats did you put in it? And these, like, anything with twin cams, like, having the, the cam gears exposed yeah. is just, like, it's one of my little, little I don't know, what quirks, I guess you'd call them. Yeah. Um, uh, race battery? So, yeah, just a, yeah, four river one. Uh, the battery normally sits here. Yeah. So I've just, I've lost my lid. Yep. Um, so airbox is completely covered. Mm -hmm. So I just have moved the battery there, so yep. it starts a car and runs Yeah, we've right. removed the lid for this photo shoot. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 if anyone's watching. <laughs> um, awesome, man. That's perfect. That's um, yeah. We'll pop that back up later for some photos. But that's gangster, man. It's such a such a good build, eh? Like yeah, it's just. I mean, it it drives really like a Corolla. I think that precision. They're just big on making it a drivable street car. Yeah. And then when you want it, you can you can open it up and it's it's all there. Sick, man. But yeah, so gearbox has been done. So I've got a welded center diff because they just die. Mm -hmm. um, Evo3 gear set in the gearbox. It's got a Evo3 mechanical LSD, four bolt, stronger uh, rear diff. So yeah, it's, you know, everything's, you know, will I break it? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. But, uh, but you've, you've sort of sorted everything yeah. to the point where it's a super reliable. Yep. So it's it's just a it's just a street car. Yep. It's just a like your weekend. Yep. I've had a busy week. I'm going out for a punt sort of thing. Yeah. It's awesome, man. I love that. So I went I went for a cruise. It was that uh, turned out app, that new app that's out. Yeah. So I went yeah, down yeah. there and um, had a had a met those guys down there, and I've sort of turned up, and there uh, some guys looking at it, yep. and then we turned off, and I give it a bit, and. Even though it's four-wheel drive, traction is still an issue. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit 
wiggly up the road and then we pulled up a set of lights and the guys behind me are going what the hell is that and you can see him reading the badge yeah like galant oh, had no idea never heard of it yeah that's right it's not a magna <laughs> no no we love the magna we, love we were talking about um cars that had like headlight to headlight rate um intercoolers back yeah, in the day. yeah i'm thinking of like there's cars that were around penrith and then someone commented what about regola's ute and i'm like god how did i forget like the most iconic yeah. car of 99 or 95 with a you know what i mean I know, is headlight that... to headlight intercooler yeah if we're talking about the intercoolers, you can see it's yeah, yeah. fully blacked out. It's only I can't it's a even... basic intercooler. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, Chinese sort of intercooler. Yeah. But it's it works fine. Yeah. yeah. I could get probably more efficient, but, you know, it's, it, it goes all right. Did it factory front mount? Uh, not odd spec, but the Jap spec ones come with a little intercooler. Nice. Which will... to sort of to run it down the track and see what you can get out of it. I might do a bit of roll racing. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think I'll hang out the water. Yeah. You know, just to take it down the roll race just to give it a hit because you can't do it on the street. So. Yeah. So here's the here's the promise everybody. If, <laughs> if, if Kango's roll racing, we're going to be there to film it because that's very exciting. This thing would just... I, I would love to see the faces of people, you know, like turn it up thinking they've got a quick car and then this little the little Mitsubishi magnet turns up next to them. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I like that. That's a mad little sticker they've done for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so where's the actual it's all just all in its factory positions. Yeah, so that's the thing. It's like it's a, a factory return mm. fuel return and it's a six AN feed and I've got two uh Walbro two five five pumps in the tank in a billet cradle thing. So it's not loud, you can't hear the pumps, it's, yeah, and it's still good for a lot more power with that fuel system in it. Was that your idea? Or did no, you that's, oh. yeah, that's Aaron. How yeah. good is he? Yeah, that's it's, mad. He's just, yeah, do we need to do this? No? Okay. Yeah. So it's just clean as. So, yeah. and it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's mo mostly original paint. Yeah. Um, there's been, obviously, some repairs done, it, you know, through its life, but yeah. it's, you know, it's pretty much original paint. Yeah. Just a heap of paint correction and stuff that the guys in the clear ceramic coated paint correction, paint correction. Every time I put a mark on it, I ring John up and say, "Come and fix this scratch for me." And Let's go there right now. So that John's this. He's in the clear. In the clear here. So he does all yeah, yeah the paint correction and the yeah. and the detailing. Yeah, we'll make sure we give him a mad shout yeah. so he can keep getting good good paint corrections done. It's made it's. Yeah, John, because we're near a mine, mate, they've wet the road on us. So we're going to need a detail of the Sabo, mate. Yeah, we're coming <laughs> over now. <laughs> yeah, so this is all original paint through here. Yeah, so bits and pieces have been paid. I had to I give it a good hit on the boot, so I had to get the boot done. Mm. Um, so Pro Street Body Works with the Savannah Rotary yeah, episode yeah, you did. Yeah, the guys yeah. have painted that. He's done because I've got some other wheels. He's painted the wheels for me, and he's done bits and pieces for me over the years. So it, this is—it's it, just been well looked after. Yeah, really well looked after. Vince really looked after it. Yeah, yeah like his baby. Our windows. This sticker I had remanufactured because it was missing. Oh wow! So just those little '90s things. So the the also the rear sticker on the back, the North Shore Mitsubishi, because it was purchased from North Shore Mitsubishi. Yeah. So I've got that remanufactured. Um, yeah. So they're the factory. Like floor mats, freight oh, free wow. floor mats. Wow! So I've had to wore out a hole in it. Yeah. In a little Mitsubishi, I've got a thing 
just stitched onto it. Be nice. a factory seat. That they said that tape deck took yeah. me five years. <laughs> and I've had other ones and I've got a guy from Queensland who sent it down to me and Australia Post kicked it the whole way down. Mm. So all the solders little broke on the back. Yeah. So yeah. I got to get that fixed and I got it there in the end. So it, the tape deck plays, it's Pell Jam, we can play for Pell you if Jam, you want. Pell Jam, love that, yes. I've got Jane's Addiction and I've got some 1995 club tracks. <laughs> in there. I don't know how good they work. I don't think the Jane's Addiction one actually works real good. Yeah. So these are the factory the factory brakes and they've just got... Nah, got, so they... slotted um, rotors, D yeah. DBA rotors, front and back, yeah. braided lines. Nice. Um, Every single rubber bush has been replaced in it. The only bit of rubber I haven't replaced are the windscreen wipers. Because it yeah. doesn't go in the rain, so it doesn't really matter. Doesn't need them. <laughs> but yeah, every, I've done every single rubber bush. Nice. So it's really tight. I mean, you go, you go like, um, show me another car from 1989 where the door jams are all clean, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like you're, you're wiping them out, aren't you? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I do it every now and then in my car, and they're absolutely disgusting, mate. So that's really like showing the, the detail of the cleanliness of the car. That's awesome, man. I love it. Um, so, like, yeah, so factory interior, um, just a couple of six inch speakers. Yeah, so yeah. I would like to get the factory ones if I could find some. Just to, I don't know, just to have that whole, that sleeper thing. It's just sort yeah. of that interests me. Yeah, definitely, man. And I love this, like, that's got to be the largest factory taco I've ever seen. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> And this is, this is what, I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness, because this is what started it all. Like, yeah, it is, yeah. You know? This is like really what, set, I mean, they're bloody heavy. They're 1550 Whoa, kilos, so yeah. they're heavy. Yeah. I mean, I've taken off some of the weight, so chromoly tubular sort of front cross member, mm -hmm. and the rear diff moustache bars, the tubular one, the four-wheel steer weighed about, must have been 60 kilos, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's gone. Yep. So there's a bit off it, but it's still... I've got that's dynamated as well, and yep. I'm not trying to, you know, save weight, but mm -hmm. yeah, they were heavy, and that's why when they went to the Lancer, it was so much lighter. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Beautiful. but it is a, it is, it does. I like those cars that meant something, yeah. like the GT4, mm -hmm. like, you know, Sierra Cosworth or oh, R32 yeah. Skyline. Yeah. Those memories yeah. you have of a kid. I remember mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. Bathurst and seeing those cars just dominating yeah. Sierras and and. Um, yeah. And skylines, you know, it's just that I like those sort of things, you know. Yeah, and like, Built like even even the mini, you see, like, yeah. like when they're, they're battling the GT Falcons, you know, going around yeah. Panorama, there's little minis yeah. coming at it, you know, like. Yeah, so this is a. I'm not a Mitsubishi person. I, I respect all sort of cars and what people do with them, and you know, it's all a, a you know extension of someone's personality, what their car is, you know. Sure. So, and I yeah, just but I do like the cars that are built. For a reason, yeah. I just like that. Sort of yeah, thing. Oh, that's interesting. That that big car company, just these were like fifty-five grand, brand new. Yeah. yeah. So who was going to buy that in nineteen ninety-one? Yeah. What could you get? What could you get for fifty-five grand in ninety-one? Yeah. You know, like that's the best Commodore they sell. You know. Yeah. But, but there was just no. There was sort of no interest. So why was Mitsubishi do that? Because they wanted this ego of being building this, you know, mm. rally car to try and win, you know, a car race. The four-wheel steer. I've totally deleted the four-wheel steer yeah because yeah. the steering rack leaked and there's guys that rebuild them but it's just uh, it doesn't so, do anything so when you can you i don't know if i'll be able to see it so you've just put like a a rod in where that would have been so i've just removed it yeah. and so dsms in america would come with what's called a passive rear wheel steer okay so this is basically doesn't have the rack in it so under under yeah so what am i looking at oh uh, you probably won't be Too able to see way. it yeah, yeah. Right. so now under hard steering the bushes will flex and the wheels will turn so you can block it out but you don't you don't notice it so but but how did the, so how did it like mechanically how did it work when it was factory how does the so it had a work? it had a uh, like a mechanical pump that goes on top of the diff when you got over a certain speed that would then pump and then would turn the wheels and it's just a bush it just sort of flexes the bushes wow so it's not so even... you're not talking massive steer, nah, it's just it's, a little bit it's a tiny little bit of steer yeah because the uh preludes Prelude, the the yeah. preludes had it i think yeah it's a bit of a dark heart the old yeah, yeah. Steer, well it? now it's all coming back so oh, there's it? cars cars you know the porsches i think have got them now and okay. there's cars that are you know developing four-wheel steer so yeah i mean what about like the change in mechanics 
you, you, you're no longer turning through a corner, you're sort of crabbing through the corner, yeah. which I guess gives you so much more traction, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, interesting. How many k's are on it? 112,000. Oh, mate. What about this? A little speaker here. Because you could put it, you could upgrade the speaker yeah. and keep that. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Boston acoustics or whatever. Nice. And then the back. I love how they, but I reckon that wasn't a JDM thing, that sticker. That's like, because the Aussies, you know, they're like, Aussies blow up the turbos, we have to put a sticker yeah. on for them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there is a Jap exactly the same, but it's, it's obviously Japanese. There you go, alright. But yeah, so that one is a guy in Melbourne that remanufactured them. I think it's the same for, um, for like Sigmas, mm -hmm. turbos and stuff. They have the same sticker. Sticker, that's mad. Let's go back to the start. Give, yep. us, your, give us your first car. So the first car was a Datsun 1600. It was a quick little car. Right? The guy had it before me. I think he ran like a 14.9. Um, it was 2 litre, twin Webers. And I crashed it behind Blacktown Drive-In. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, yeah, bent all the front end of it up. And I bought another shell with a motor with a blown head gasket for $600. And I changed everything over and drove for a bit and then And, then then and you scrapped it. the wreck one? Yeah, I remember. Just... I did have a photo of it on its side <laughs> in our backyard where we used to live. Because yeah. we had to move it so we could get other cars on this slab so it was sitting on its side for ages i remember getting someone's old man's full drive and dragging it up the front yard <laughs> to get it taken to the tip yeah. Yeah. but yeah so that was the first and that was the reason i got into 1600s my friend of mine turned 18 he had some money come to me bought a yellow datsun with an fj in it and he picked it up and we went down the cumberland highway and i was like oh, the only thing i like it was like an aeroplane it was just so fast, and I, uh, that's when I sort of triggered interest in cars, until I was at 18. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got the 1600, because we all sort of had them, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, we, and we all owned them because they were cheap, right? Yeah. Like it was sort of... <laughs> yeah, we're, what we know now. Give us a couple of the highlights along the way after the 1600. What did you get into? So 1600, then 1600, then well, I had a little twin cam Corolla. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, that was a fun little car. That was probably not too much slower than what the 1600 was it was a, yeah it was a good little car i loved it mm. um had that so i crashed i had the 1600 for five months then rebuilt it then i had the corolla and i was going down great western highway towards like the general burke mm. and a lady did a right hand turn in front of me and smashed it. and i wrote that off i had that for five months as well mm -hmm. um and then i had i had an excel <laughs> because i'm like stuff this man you have a car and you really like it and yeah. then you crash it or someone destroys it so we'll get a, a excel my girlfriend which is now my wife mm -hmm. um we got this excel and then all of a sudden my brother used to work at freedom fiberglass in blacktown mm -hmm. so they got the car so we're gonna do a body kit for it so then it got body kit and it got five zegan <laughs> wheels and that got stolen tell me you got photos of that before it got stolen. yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, i've no. got got a, yeah, a couple of photos of that <laughs> and then that got stolen from miranda and then it got dumped at menai and i got a phone call saying the car's been found went down there saw it it was all the body kit had been broken mm -hmm. pulled off mm -hmm. the exhaust had been put off the wheels and then i get an insurance uh, company rings me a couple of days later and said the car's not there someone stole it again really i think the tow truck drivers get scrapped for them yeah, so yeah, someone picked it up and, yeah, yeah. and stole it so then i think we got a i got another twin cam corolla mm -hmm. no i didn't i got a peugeot s16 so rally inspired car nice, so just yeah. a, mate, it was such a nice car to drive just a piece of junk mate, look, I, yeah, I'm I sorry, just broke Berger. everything yeah no nah, my missus had a brand new mistake brand new 205 yeah and we drove it from brand new and just watched it just get yeah. worse and worse and worse and never worse over the years you know such a nice car to drive mm -hmm. but just i just kept breaking things on it i did destroy the clutch racing a taxi once yeah. i shouldn't have done that yeah but yeah so yeah. a couple of clutches and inlet manifold exploded once <laughs> And it was nine <laughs> weeks to get a replacement part. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but how good do they handle oh, those little Peugeots? Oh. Bloody good car. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and I got in a motorbike for a while. I had a track bike, G6R750. Oh, so nice. Track, yeah. track days. Yeah, killed the motorbike for a while. Yeah, Loved yeah. it. Um, they had a Mazda 3 MPS. Yeah. That I'd give that an absolute hiding. Mm -hmm. And that was. Mm -hmm. Every morning, start it. The wife would drive it. It was a, such an underrated car. Same, understated mm -hmm. sleeper. No one knew what it was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was it. That was a good car. And then I've got this for 
yeah, six years. Nice. So, Beautiful. So the plan was always to, to rebuild the motor and, and, and sort of beef it up? No. No. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it changes along with my personality. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So as I get older, I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind to... So I had a big big stereo, big subs in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it took me a while to find like the, the radio, the factory Australian factory radio. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a bit of time trying to get it back. So the paint correction has been endless, mm -hmm. and every time... It gets a mark on it. I try to get it done, and John, in the clear, is like, eh, "We can't. Like, we're going to go through the paint, you know." It's like we just. So <laughs> we've, he's yeah. He's done a good job. Yeah, like, it it's does. better. It would be better than what it was out of the showroom. I would say the paint. Mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, it's very nice. But paint. yeah, I don't know. It just sort of evolves, and like, like that mate 1600 when he first got it, mm -hmm. got to a point where it felt slow. Mm -hmm, where you think something's mm -hmm. wrong with it and it's mm -hmm. like it's just you get used to it and then you know oh, we'll do a bit more in it mm -hmm. but this engine will handle 900 horsepower like yeah. it's built it's overbuilt mm -hmm. way overbuilt mm -hmm. so yeah but yeah uh so so if we give you the unlimited budget mm -hmm. what does it look like it, it'll look the same i would probably just get like the wiring done in the engine bay yeah it would look the same it may have an auto in it Okay, just yeah. Just because... Handle the power. Yeah, and also 44 years old. I just want to cruise around sometimes. <laughs> yep, yeah. But, but they look pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. They're just, yeah. I, just, I, I like it. But it is sort of... You know, your dream build. It's like, well, it's in my head what I imagine, and this is what it sort of becomes. Yeah, so. the only thing we were talking about before, I'm not sure if I got it in these cameras, we're talking about you're going to pull the Ford up, but you're going to get a custom... Yeah, so I've got them Ford coming. WS so Ford WS at the moment stands or used to stand for four wheel steer mm -hmm. at the moment it stands for four wheel skids yes and <laughs> it's getting changed to all wheel drive yeah. and it's getting changed to 2.2 yeah because that's mad. what it is and it just the uh, people that know will go that doesn't look right yeah okay yeah there we 2. go 2. yeah yeah that's the ultimate little sleeper mod i reckon that <laughs> it's gonna be mad yeah, so. yeah love that let's imagine that unlimited a budget again and you've got yourself a nice big shed let's yep. talk about what we're going to put in that shed i think I like those I iconic sort of cars. Or said, like, like one of the reasons I got this was that it was built for a purpose. It was built for World Rally. It was built for a reason. But also, I like those iconic cars. Like, I'd have a DeLorean, yeah. 8 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. I'd have maybe some of the Bond Aston Martins. Yeah. And then I would like to bring back, find some Suzuki GTIs and twin cam Corollas that have just all gone missing and yeah. just, you know, do that. Maybe start a, a fund for helping out young kids with car addictions mm -hmm. no one's got any help for the yeah, young who have a yeah. car addiction yeah but um yeah just i know those old cars that i remember as a kid like i would get my mate's yellow 1600 and fj in it i would build that same car because it yeah. just has good memories yeah know? exactly just yeah. things driving down the street listening to certain music when you hear music and remember those times driving down the street in the car definitely leyland p76 because that's what my father had oh like, it yeah it was my grandfather's yeah. car and my dad got it. So yeah. Maybe something like that, restore one of them. Yeah, I'd have to have a, an old 242 GT Volvo. Cause yeah, my yeah. old man had a couple of Volvos, yeah. you know. Yeah. You just get Every now and then you'd pull it out and give it a little drive, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, oh, nothing flash. Or supercars, yeah, maybe when I had the money in my hand, I'd be going, okay, then I'll get, I don't know. Contage or something like that. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. or something like that. Uh, and I reckon, we were talking before, I reckon there's a bunch of guys, and please comment if it happened to you, who who were in a car that was a pretty quick little car who just absolutely got pumped by one of these things back in the day because you just had no idea. They were the ultimate sleeper. Yeah. Just a, a family sedan. And um, I still get people, oh, that's Magna? That's still, that's why, you know, it's a bit of an ingoing joke amongst... You know, friends. Oh, it's nice Magna. Nice right? Magna. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's just unassuming. It's just boxy and yeah, a little bit ugly. Yeah. No. And so that's it for this episode of Grassroots Garage. And I've loved this uh, bit of bit of rally history. And Kane, thanks for your time, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Mm -hmm.